Welcome to our Section 6 Operators Memory Palace Walkthrough. As always, consider these section wrap-up videos to be 100% optional. If they help you, they help you. If not, they're just weird, so don't watch them. Okay, so to recap our last episode, we met a nervous plate of hash browns who needed to get into the shape of a triangle ASAP for his big speech. And thanks to a generous cook and a well-placed billiards rack, that's exactly what happened. And then we met a mother duck with her adorable ducklings who live inside of a skee-ball machine. Now her little ducklings were supposed to keep track of how many cute things they did that day, but they forgot. And they almost got in trouble for it, but luckily they got off with a warning. And after that we started to question reality itself as we met Morpheus from the Matrix. Now he dropped his red and blue pill under the whackable machine. But after fumbling for them for a minute, he composed himself and then presented the pills to Neo, who chose the red pill, and they were assimilated into the matrix, disappearing into a cloud of binary ones and zeros. And then finally, we closed with a transformational rom-com about two trumpet-playing clowns who've been mute for over a year, and their transformation back into speaking once they found their missing dictionary. Man, it was a wild ride. So now, get ready to continue this amazing adventure as we explore more of our Python memory palace. Wow, let's just take a second to be inspired by these clowns. Ah, amazing. Whoa, whoa, what's that? Sounds like there's a scream coming. Someone must be injured over by the elevator. Let's go. Okay, let's see. Oh, I'm hearing some buying. Could it be a sh It is. Oh my gosh. It's a fence jumping dream sheep coming out of the elevator. Looks hurt and wounded. Must be worried about himself. Oh no, this sheep might be in really bad condition. An employee starts yelling, is there a doctor in the house? Is there a doctor? Over there, getting a sandwich. Looks like there is a doctor. Wow, what a coincidence. He comes running over and he comes to check on this fence jumping dream sheep. Looks like he fell on his nose when he was trying to hop over a fence. Must have been during the counting process. Someone was trying to sleep up in one of the rooms. Oh man, so the doctor takes this sheep over his shoulder. Wow, what a doctor. And he takes him right over here and lays him out. This is kind of like his operating room table. He diagnoses the problem instantly because he's so good. He can tell that the sheep's front little hopping legs didn't make it over the fence and then he fell on his nose and he hurt his nose and it's starting to swell up. It's really bad. The doctor's worried. He needs a way to release the blood, but there's nothing. There's just nothing. And he looks up and as though an angel had just come from the heavens above, a noble tick walks over to him and says, It would be humbling to serve the greater good of humanity. If I can help, I will. I have the ability to swell up to 20 times my body size. I can hold blood. I suck it out. I'm a tick. Would you like to use me to drain the blood? The doctor doesn't even have time for words. He just picks up this tiny little tick as gently and as quickly as he can and puts him on the swelling nose of this fence-jumping dream sheep. The little tick takes one moment to look up at the doctor and exhales to create as much room as he can to hold the blood and salutes the doctor with a military style salute. And the doctor nods his head, salutes the little tick back. <gasps> and it's such an amazing sight to see this noble tick breathing in so much blood and soon as he's full, the once lifeless sheep looks up. Bah! Oh my gosh, he's better. He gets up. He's trying to jump a little bit. Oh man, his strength is coming back. There he goes. He just jumped. He just jumped back over to the elevator. He's going right back up to help that person fall asleep by jumping over the fence. He looks like he's in great shape. <laughs> the doctor starts laughing. In fact, everyone starts laughing. The whole area is just so relieved. They're so excited. And as the doctor looks over to give some more praise to this tiny tick, he notices the tick took in too much blood. <sighs> Silence falls over the entire restaurant. This tick sacrificed his life for that sheep. And there is nothing more powerful than that. Now let me direct your attention over here. I want to tell you a great story about some of America's finest firefighters. 
Here we have a dog who's applying to be part of the local Las Vegas fire department. And he's sitting down with one of the firemen recruiters. It's been not the best interview, let's say, because for this poor dog, he isn't a Dalmatian. And the firefighters, they really only hire Dalmatians. But kind of deep down, we know this is a little bit, you know, stereotypical. Don't want to throw out the race card or anything, but, uh, you know, there hasn't been a fire department to pick up a non-Dalmatian, but this dog's not going to take no for an answer. And when he barks out the word affirmative action, the firefighter gives in and he says, listen, dog, I think we can have you on the team. Maybe it would be good to be the first fire department in the country to not have a Dalmatian, but you still got to be qualified to fight fires. The dog says, you know, bark is yes. So here's the problem with regular dogs, is we give homework at the fire department. We have to always be studying the newest firefighting techniques. And when we give homework to dogs, they tend to eat them. Do you have that problem? And inside, the dog is thinking, ah, crap, every time I've ever had homework, the second I get it, I eat it. And this is going to be really hard. But he says out loud, bark, meaning not a problem. So the firefighter says, okay, here is some nice, delicious homework for you to do. It's going to take about three hours to do, and I need you to sit right here the whole time looking at it, even when you're done, and don't eat the homework. If you can do that, you're on the squad, and we'll get you an official firefighting dog identification card, firefighter dog ID, that you can put on your collar. Man, this dog has never wanted to eat homework more in his life. Minute after minute is agonizing. He just thinks, gosh, I want that ID card. He says, I'm a firefighter dog, but I also want to just eat this homework. Bark, bark. He just barks and he's, you know, pulling his paws together and he's fidgeting and he's just sitting here. Every second becomes harder and harder. But one step at a time, you can do anything. And this dog fights it for the entire three hours. And when the fireman comes back, he looks at the completed homework and at the dog, obviously mentally exhausted, says, you know what, Fido, that's his name, you're going to be great on this team. Welcome to the squad. The dog gives out a happy bark, bark, and takes his new firefighter dog identification collar in his mouth and walks right out the door, so excited, tails wagging like crazy back and forth, just zigs all over the place. And now, over here, where Spock from Star Trek is in line, coming up to one of the tellers at this Merrill Lynch brokerage branch, and he wants to invest some of his Starfleet bonus. I know there's no money in Star Trek, but pretend. So he's got this big Starfleet bonus of future money, and he says to the Merrill Lynch, I am looking for a high-return portfolio. Can you facilitate such a request? And this Merrill Lynch sales broker comes up, and he's got tattoos all over his face. He's a gangster, and Spock knows it. But Spock has no emotion, so he just keeps things logical. And this Merrill Lynch gangster sales broker is like, Hey, I can get you in this like high-yield thing, and that high-yield thing, and like, you know, here's a bunch of paperwork, and there's probably hidden fees, but you probably won't read all of it, so just sign here. And Spock says... If you would like a high probability of my business, I would like you to put this lie detector on your left arm. And the gangster's like, aw, dog, no way. Like, I don't want to do that. And he's like, well, if you want my business, it's one million Starfleet dollars. You will get a percentage of it as long as it's a fair percentage. Totally plain face, all logical. And this Merrill Lynch gangster is like, "Ah, fine. And then Spock says, and then Spock says, that first portfolio with high yields, is that true? Eh, gangster's lying to him. He's going to take his money. It goes on like this until finally Spock hears, ding, found something that is high yield. And then he says, are you going to make a lot of profit off it? And the guy says, no. Ding. Finally, Spock has found the right investment for his Starfleet dollars because he hooked up this Merrill Lynch gangster sales broker to a lie detector before asking him about the investments. And you know what? That Merrill Lynch gangster guy, he's like, he is going to make a good amount of money anyways. It's just a fair amount. So he can like, you know, buy dubs for his, you know, Star Trek style futuristic lowrider or whatever. And Spock's happy that he's getting a good yield. See, that's how everybody wins. 
It's a good business lesson about equality in this lesson. Finn. Subscribe to our Mnemonic Academy YouTube channel for daily uploads that will help you learn amazing concepts through effortless associations.